Now to the CEO's report. So we've done page 67, 68, and I'm on page 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, Jimmy. Thank you, Chair. Whether we can get this kind of presentation briefing of the written material as well, I just want to know. Yeah. Um, yes, we can certainly do that. Um, you want uh, just on the work on the visitor strategy? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. This yep. kind of. Yeah. Okay, okay Colleen, I'll get that for you. No problem. No problem. Okay, item uh, page 75. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, Jimmy, Yanni. Um, the new central library. Um, concerned to see that we still have problems with the um, confirmation of the land acquisition. Is there any further development there or what sort of timelines are we expecting to work to? Because I'm very aware that delays over land um, acquisition will translate into delays to the whole project. Okay. I'll just ask um, uh, David Adamson to respond. Thanks. May I say that the um, CRM to the Governor General and his uh, compulsory acquisition bit so when will they actually acquire the land in that process, Dave? Um, my understanding, uh, I think this side of Christmas, and they're okay. actually looking at demolishing it, and then that's the neighbours up to the contract. <coughs> Yeah, I completely understand that. Yep. So I acknowledged a series of people. I've forgotten you all. <laughs> Sorry. Yanni. Um, uh, Jimmy was next, wasn't he? Yeah. You, you're, you go. Yeah. Then Ali. Okay. Then you. Thank you, Chair. As regarding the Hagley Over Test right, Cricket, yeah. uh, if the Canterbury Cricket Trust request, you know, the way based managing the venue on their behalf, I just want to know, you know, to be clarified, who owns uh, this pavilion facility? Who operates? Who is responsible for the maintenance operating cost? Is that you, Dave? Mm. Uh, the pavilion is not only operated by Canterbury, it's actually it is, it's probably a trust or something, but it's not our uh, key owned ground, but we don't actually have the pavilion. But who is responsible for maintenance? Um, it's leased. It's leased to a couple of entities. Not you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've got actually Yanni next, then Ali. Great, um, thank you. Um, just a question on that. Given that the pavilion's now being used for commercial use, is there a review of the fees and charges that we're charging in terms of the lease? I mean, VBase are running it as a function centre. Could you get the answer back to Yanni? That would be helpful. We, we've had some concerns expressed Thank you. from people. Yeah, well, we'll um, get the answer. The new Central Library. Are, are, is there any councils on that project control group? And is it coming back to the appropriate committee or to us at a governance level around the detailed design? Because my understanding was there's a few challenges in terms of what we've got on budget, what we'd like, and what that might end up looking like. So how, how are we engaged in that process? Um, Challenged, I would say at this point the QSs are saying what we want and maybe the budget don't quite match. I don't know how uh, the other side of the, uh, how the original budget was uh, generated. Uh, the other thing is there is part of that process. Put your finger in the air. We are now.
I, I think us having some visibility would be really good. Um, and I was just going to say, I think the Performing Arts Precinct, the feasibility study, would be good for that to come to the um, CHED committee, um, or at least to some elected members. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what's happening with the Performing Arts Precinct. Well, can the Performing Arts Precinct feasibility study be circulated to us as elected members, um, and can we get an update on what's happening there as well, why it's it, timing, budget, progress? Thank you, thank you. Um, Carlene's got the oh, uh, was... answer. I'll come back to you, Ali. Oh, to the smart choices. Yes, yeah, sorry, question. smart choices. We've had over 400 responses to date, um, online and in written form, um, and added to that were the verbal uh, responses um, made at the 25 community events that elected members um, attended during that time. And so they've started pulling together the information already and I hope to have a report early next week. Thank you very much. Ali. I just wanted to reiterate actually what Yani was saying and I'd be very keen to know that particularly with regards in the Performing Arts Precinct uh, with the key anchor um, tenants there that we still haven't heard about which is the CSO and the Court Theatre. That seems to be ongoing. Um, just a question around the Christchurch Town Hall and forgive me I should have found this out actually beforehand rather than asking it here but uh, the question around how the Town Hall is to be repaired, which bit may not, which bit might or what have you, because I know there are some options within the agreed uh, cost share that we can um, uh, go with. How is the tender being developed and released based on the repair of what? Dave knows that. As you know, we had expressions of interest. Getting the whole shebang and then so you adjusting as you okay. Right. Perfectly. So yeah. we're okay. I must admit it does. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else on page 75, 76? Jimmy Minton. Issues. Also, I ask the town hall. Uh, uh, why is the uh, request for proposal or uh, kind of scope of work regarding the town hall? It's a repair to the auditorium, James High border room, foyer, and also the kind of the lamps room, everything, or just part of me? Already. Second question is regarding to the southwest area hub because I emphasize many, many times. Last time, based on staff, the oral the explanation where, you know, the, to uh, present the, this the report of the site, site selection to the community board will be at the at, uh, beginning of December. But, but I check the council, uh, 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 the kind of meeting schedule will be held on 2nd of December. Is that true or not? Yeah, but it's possible, you know, sub supplementary question. It's possible next time can follow some other project, have a kind of draft, roughly the time schedule. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
give us the picture. I, I repeated for many times, you never put in here. Jimmy, we know that they are actually looking at a different range of options now, including some education support, as you know from the long term planning discussion. So, Dave's right, we will bring that to you as soon as we can. Okay, Tim. Um, with regards to Committee uh, Facilities Rebuild, the Garty Hall, Mona Vale Homestead, Simon Taki and Waltham Pool, I'd argue, would be repairs. So with these significant community facilities, I'd argue that the stone, uh, Craycroft Old Stone House would be in this lot as well. And I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm sure Phil will be in the same mind here, can we get an update of where this is? Because to be quite frank, I'm sick and tired of waiting and I want to get some firm action on this. Okay, Dave. Uh, yeah, very quickly, the, um, all of those are covered off in the Heritage Monthly Update that comes via uh, the CHED committee. Mm. So um, I think next week, the meeting, you'll see an update on all of the Heritage Program come through. For the purposes of this um, discussion, I got given a number of um, topical items to respond to and, and uh, for some reason that wasn't one of the ones that came through this report but it will be covered as I say next week at uh, the CHED committee. Well could we ensure that this is on this list from now on? Is that, it's, that's okay. Yep. But I do want to make clear that as a council we've since wanted to build up community um, partnerships etc. The Old Stone House is actually a really good example of this which has uh, the community has an involvement with the Botanic Gardens green spaces, it's a facility for weddings, earns money, and it is in danger for these groups that use it are starting to fall over. This is a crucial and key community facility and we need to move it forward. I'm okay, just sending it. Coming to the Chief Committee and if the report continues in this format, Craycroft will be along your yep. next and, I, and I do want some firm dates on that. I know that's hard, but we've been waiting oh, long yeah. enough. It's, Thank it's you. funded and it's in our priority one, so you'll see all that stuff. Thank you. I think you made the point very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Willing. Just the Edgeware um, master plan, no update available this month, there wasn't one last month. Is there um, any progress? Now, I know that the Grassmere Cycleway is, is part of that project and that is, is progressing, um, but is there anything else planned in, in, in part of that? Or can... Who can you chair it, Sorry, I don't have those. Or, or if, could we perhaps just say for the next month's report, can we please have an update then? It would be really, yeah. would it be right for next month? The next CEO yeah, report? Yeah. That oh, yeah. Even if it's been something like tenders and notifications, so just so we've got some idea of where it's at. Nothing happening, and there will be an update. Yeah. Yeah. I've also got another one just on, on the next page 80, mm -hmm. if I may. Um, um, we'll finish on 79, guys. Okay. Yeah. Could we have an up, uh, update of both Sydenham and the Salon Street shops, please? Because some met, long time ago, Phil met with a developer and council staff with regards to Salon Street shops. Nothing has happened, so I'd actually like an update from staff with regards to Salon and Sydenham. Thank you. Right, is there any part of the city that Tony's not working on? <laughs> yeah, CBD. Um, I, I just look at the heritage buildings like Sana Takahe and Mona Vale, and I just, I, I just raise the question, um, I'm really concerned that the son of the Takahe is still in the consenting phase, when we probably approved funding for that almost a year and a half, maybe two years ago. So something doesn't sit right with me. Is it possible to just, I know this has come up at the CHED committee, um, is it possible to get an understanding around, in terms of what we're doing around consenting and whether we can um, in relation to those um, priority heritage projects that you've talked about, the contracts are all in place and we've got contractors mobilised and on site now at Gaiety Hall and we're anticipating next week they'll be on site doing Mona Vale, sign of the Takahe, etc. So, yep, it has taken a while longer than we thought. Um, the nature of the work we're doing to the heritage buildings um, require us to take a bit more time and a bit more um, partnering with our consenting um, friends on Level 3. Um, but, again, you'll get a bit more of an update. The, the primary... The primary um, 
target for reporting progress on those is via the CHED committee, so there'll be a full update on all of those projects heard next Thursday afternoon as well. When do you expect work to actually begin on Manor Bay and the park? Um, I'm expecting a contractor's on site next week. Can you speak to that both? Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Confirm that kind of request for the the urban regeneration, maybe just have a little bit more detailed reporting, um, particularly around things like the coastal pathway where things are happening. Um, and and Ferry Road and I just okay, yeah, so wanted we'll, to echo we'll that. Over. Okay. Um, and just one question I had on seventy six, which is part of this kind of facilities rebuild. Oh, Napuna, where are you? 76? Yeah, it's part of it's part of that whole report. Um, the Napuna Y, I know that the consultation finishes on the 10th of December. Um, so it says a special consultative procedure is being undertaken will be completed in December 2014. I just wondered, is there any way that we can get that decided on by the end of the year? No, I think we've, we've worked through that once before, haven't we? We tried very hard to do that. I remember asking some questions. Just on me now asking who wants to volunteer. Yeah, and I volunteered to go on it. But the thing is, um, yeah, okay, so if there's no way it can happen, that's 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 a shame, but yeah. Okay. Okay, right. Uh, what page are you on, Pauline? Twenty nine. Eighty two. Are you on eighty two? Okay, right. Thank you. Just if I could please have a date for report on the uh, Expressions of interest over the new Brighton Legacy project. Have we got a time frame there? Yeah, they have. Um, okay, thank you. Page 80 now, I'm on to. I'm not going back. Okay. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> the High Street um, implementation at the top of the page, and um, this is not our thing, but I'm wondering what's happening with the shops north uh, to the south of Chewham, all that area in there that's still red zoned. Is that a horrible looking one? Yeah, so are we able to get some sort of a request and update from, from the Mackenzie and Wallace and the ones in High Street? No, down. back, yeah, towards Polytech. Yeah. Yeah, because um, um, that whole it's still red zoned and it's um, it's going to hold the whole area back. Yeah. So, is it possible to request some sort of information, I or do you? We might just include on this report each month um, those shops and the pile of rubble on Colombo Street, which yep. I must must say I probably get more complaints about than yeah. the mobile. <laughs> and if you if you have an office on um, St Asaph Street to the rear of those shops, and you yep. have to look at the back of that yep. every day. And yep. I know people in there that are just absolutely tired of it. It's a huge eyesore. It's massive. I totally, totally agree. I um, think it's got to do with the Mackenzie and Wallace building and the heritage wall. Um, but let's get an update, if we can, Pauline, on those two sites. Thank you. Uh, yep, no problem. I'm on page 80, are you? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I also was going to ask about height. We have actually had resolutions to try and work with Sarah and invite ministers to come and discuss it, because it's a designated site, so... Yeah, we need to do kind of get some resolution. Um, accessible city. I just the bus interchange. Um, are we are we going to get a report back on that at some stage around the ownership and the operational aspects? Uh, yes, we will need that briefing. Like, we, when is that coming? Very soon. We will need it very soon. Well, going to do that. Yeah, I've written it down. <laughs> okay. Right. Thanks. Well, then. Still on 80, um, in the Public Realm Network plan, so the project team has undertaken a stakeholder engagement process. Um, can we, do we have a list of who the stakeholders are? Uh, we can get you that, we don't have it with us. But was it not, is it not the full public? Is it not everybody or? This is, is Sarah doing that? Um, Of, look, my, my understanding is that they've, they've dealt, I think, with some of the uh, key landowners in the area, and obviously they're talking to council, but I'll, I'll come back to you with a full list. I think it needs to be um, noted that this 
uses the word engagement rather than consultation. And they are different things, aren't they? Would that be fair to say? Yes, I'm not it's sure not that that's intentionally uh, meant to be anything other than stakeholders general and engagement general. But um, uh, we can get that information to you about what they're actually doing. Okay. And so how long is that engagement process? Can we get that as well, please? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, on page 81. And now I'm coming to the end and looking at the appendix. 83, and now I'm quickly... No, I'm not. <laughs> um, this question, Carlene, is, look, and thank you for the reply about um, how what we're doing to mitigate <coughs> wastewater overflows. <coughs> and I, because I haven't really been able to ascertain, and it's outside council's, um, council's jurisdiction, um, my question's in relation to the, lateral, um, pri the laterals on private, from private property that adjoin the, um, the work, for example, that SCIRT are doing in fixing the main pipes. So it's really can, um, given the impact of those broken laterals, can we ascertain Council from EQC, what their processes are in relation to um, fixing the, the broken uh, wastewater laterals, particularly when Skirt have um, repaired street wastewater pipes. So um, no, that's um, not. I don't expect you. To, uh, no, I, I, mine we, just answer some of it. Oh, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so EQC <coughs> is responsible for um, earthquake damaged uh, laterals up to 60 metres from the house, um, and I understand that they had an agreement. Um, developed so that as the main sewers were laid, they would realign the laterals um, that were earthquake damaged. Um, currently they've got about 1,200 claims um, that they're working through the Canterbury, Canterbury Home Repair Program and looking at another 900. Um, but they respond to claims, so uh, if um, householders uh, feel they've got a problem from earthquake damaged laterals, um, they should be getting their drain layers to do a DVD um, and then uh, um, EQC will look at that, but they'll reimburse the cost of that if it's earthquake damage. Of course, the other causes of damage, tree roots and those sorts of things, wouldn't be covered by that. That's significant. I wonder if people know that. I think that... Um, I don't think they do. I, I think that for what it... Like, what my other question will be, and I don't, we won't have this now, is how many um, properties, <laughs> private properties, have you know, EQC um, fixed the, lat the laterals on? And, and um, I, I'm aware there's a lot of claims in, but and I think that people aren't aware of the process. Thanks for explaining the DVD process. At some level, earlier on the earthquake, um, after, after the earthquakes, people were aware of that. But the, there's a whole lot of work that I think probably does need to be done, but it certainly needs clarification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just add to that that um, there's a lot of people that still don't know, so there needs to be some sort of a, a publicity about this. Secondly, if people, uh, they have to pay for it themselves up front and it's about $450, EQC will reimburse if it's proven to be earthquake. Now because of the length of time, often you can have tree roots already in there from the earthquake damage and it could be in interpreted that the tree roots caused the damage, not the earthquake, so we're into that zone. But the fact that people have to stump up that $400 odd is a bit of a barrier for people getting it done. And as Phil said, it's actually negatively impacting on our own council stormwater because it allows the silt to come in. So it's a very serious issue. And um, I know a couple of people that have just had it done this week. So how many people are out there that haven't had their laterals inspected? And I think it's something we need to do in action an action on somehow? Can, can I suggest that um, I actually talk to um, EQC um, to talk about what their process might be for advising um, and informing people of this sort of option. Um, I've just had a quick chat to them this morning, so it's just really a verbal update from the conversation that I heard. Okay, Tim and then Ali. Um, it also would be really good to cl clarify, because when we got ours done, it had to be an approved drain layer by EQC, so it's not just your drain layer. So if we could get clarification on that, because it is a, it's a very long process, because they take the DVD, then they send it to Wellington for someone in Wellington to have a look at. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Our drain layer is a drain layer, you know? Like so. But anyway, but I just if we could clarify that it has to be an EQC-approved drain layer company that does the video. Because that's my understanding. That was what we were told, and we had a short list of who we could use. Yeah. 
So I'll, I'll ask if ETC the... to formally yep. um, respond to some of these questions. Because I'm and... aware that we are live streamed and if people are listening to this and going to get their drain layer and suddenly find out that the drain layer is not EQC on their list or whatever, then I would hate for people to undertake that work and find it's no use. Okay, Ali. To Carlene as well, when she does raise this, one of the if they want to prioritise, we've I've got two cases recently where a driveway has been repaired over the access point to the laterals. So there, I mean, that might be exceptional. Somehow, I doubt it. But there are people who are undergoing repairs on driveways at the moment, which will mean once they're done, the access to the laterals may not be quite as simple, and they might be able to do them both at the same time. Thank you. And Yanni, last question. Yeah, um, two questions on this page, 83. Um, Por Forest Park, um, I I'm just really puzzled uh, w whether we're going to get a report to come to the committee or to council t to approve going out for an EOI and what we're actually asking for in the EOIs. I'm also puzzled as to we haven't figured out what's happening with the red zone. This is in the middle of the red zone, adjacent to it. And we're going out for EOIs now for what can happen without understanding all the other stuff that we're trying to look look at in the red zone. So, um, can you just... In relation to the people who park. park. Right yeah. I mean, I think it's great what people are offering to do there, but I am worried that there doesn't seem to be a kind of bigger picture strategy around the red zone. Well, I don't know what the flooding or the stormwater or whatever, I don't know any of the impacts of the roading <laughs> network. I think so. Yeah. And I think it, it should be, there should be a, a process that the council actually signs off on going out for EOIs or RFPs for areas. Um, and then number three, and also oh, just to say, Hagley Freeman Community Board's probably got quite a big interest given it's right on the boundary of our ward. So any development there's likely to have an impact and yet we've had almost no information on this at all. Um, and then three. Oh, can I just check? So you want a uh, report on Porrock Park or Red Zone in general? Well, no, I just want to understand the sequencing yes. because I support looking Park at what Park. we do. There's been a lot of um, yeah. stuff on the media about exactly. the proposal. It would mm -hmm. be really good to know where it's at. Yeah, and how it relates to the wider strategic look at the Red Zone. Yeah. And number three, just the dust monitoring in Wolston. I, I was really hoping we'd get a bit more of a report on... Um, on this, so just understanding what's happening. I see with the dust, it's all about land managers, but I kind of wonder from an enforcement point of view whether we've got, in terms of land use consenting, what role we've got in terms of council. I, I am really concerned to see that that's an, an issue that in Wolfston where the dust is actually, um, the air quality is really poor, and I'd want to know what we're actually doing to um, really control that as best we can. Oh, do you want to answer that one? Um, or Just briefly, that the, there's a joined up group of the different agencies involved who report to, to the uh, Infrastructure, Environment and Transport Committee, report regularly, um, it's, it's quarterly, and they've previously given really good information. Now, if the specific areas, um, you know, certainly people might want to ask about that. Well, I think that is a, the committee say is an appropriate vehicle to actually um, check out any, any further specific or concerns about specific areas. So when they do the next quarterly report, could you specifically ask them to include Wolfson, Liani? Okay. Thank you, Phil. Glenn. Thank you, if I may, just Thank very you. quickly, just on the Park Park um, aspect there, when it came to the board, we, in discussion, tried to determine, obviously, by way of uh, lease, uh, how risk works. It seems to me it would transfer to anyone developing there, but we need to just clearly ascertain that. So I, I think just to support Yanni on this, it would be the responsible thing to do, to get all that info on the land. It's, it's, it's bad land, uh, but we do need the data, and I think that's a responsible thing to do before actually going down the path of an EOI. Oh, just on that dust thing, we've got a problem in St Albans around Stapleton's Road, and it's the Worthington's contract. Um, so if I could um, perhaps request that the Chair um, request some information on that. And I note too that the enforcement's, it's really difficult because the part of the um, consents means that they have to damp down the, um, the rubble when they're dealing with it. And it's really hard to actually enforce that all the time to make sure that they are complying. But um, um, it's interesting that ECAN both of their air um, monitoring, their, their detectors, 
for the, um, the clean air quality. One's in Wollstone and one's in St Albans. And both of those are where we have a very high dust problem as well. So I just need to point that out, but I'm wondering how um, reflective of the data it is citywide, perhaps, or is it? Thank you. Carried. I'm now on items 